Welcome everyone to this episode of Ask a Deaf Doula. My name is Suzanne O'Brien. Thrilled to have this conversation with you. This podcast is titled How to Make a Full-Time Income as a Deaf Doula, and we're going to break it all down. So the first thing that I want you to ask yourself before we go any further is, is being a deaf doula really a calling for me? So that is something that you need to be very honest with yourself. If you are here because it's making news and we know that we have an aging demographic like we've never had before in history, we know the problems with mainstream medical. We know that people are living longer than we ever had. And we know that there is a huge gap in good end of lives for a multitude of reasons. Being called to this space, and it is a calling, has to resonate in every cell of your being, that you're being asked to come forward and to work in a space of end of life or not just that person that's having their end of life, but to hold their loved ones together as well. So it's a full, it's not an easy thing. You're taking care of not only the person, but the loved ones as well. And every single person in that end of life experience could be having a different experience and they usually are, can get very heavy at times. This is a calling, but if you are here listening to this podcast because you know that it keeps showing up for you, that you keep feeling pulled to this, that you keep saying to yourself, that's what I'm supposed to be doing, then that is a calling for you. Now, I want to break this down really clearly, is that if you want this to be your full-time income, and I say full-time income, not necessarily saying full-time work, because I'll be very honest with you in, in two factors of full-time work, like let's use an example as a 40-hour work week. Finding end of life, okay, that death doula that's at the bedside with somebody who's dying 40 hours a week, every single week continuously is number one, impossible to do because you will be working with a family, then they'll have their end of life and you may not have another family right away. The second part, and probably one of the most important things is that you cannot sustain working at the bedside of end of life patients and families 40 hours a week, you will burn out. It is a total burnout. You Right now, end of life is not going well. So there's a lot of things that show up at the end, um, unfortunately. And that's what we're out here trying to do is create conversation and a platform to shift end of life back into the natural sacred experience it's meant to be. And that comes with awareness and education and planning ahead. And then of course, being there at the end of life. And then what happens after that person has their end of life. So most of this, or a lot of this is really education, but I want to share with you again, that I actually removed my, just my death doula certification course from doula givers for a few reasons. And number one, because I want to educate the best end of life practitioners I possibly can. And so to have an end of life practitioner is wonderful, but to have a really good end of life takes again, planning, understanding advanced directives and living well aging plans and what goes on with that and grief as well. And all of the things that happen in end of life. And so you want to make sure that, again, if you're doing this work and you want this to be your full-time income, you have to be crystal clear on how you make that happen. And so I talked a minute ago about 40 hours a week at just end of life is virtually impossible to do on an ongoing basis for reasons logistically, having a patient right after somebody dies, which you don't want to rush into another case. You want to help that family with um, the, you know, life re-entry after loss, helping them with figuring out what the next steps are, maybe grief support. And then you need a break as well at times. So to jump back into another case is not good practice. You have to be the one who benchmarks that. But again, they're not lined up. Usually we get people who call and they're like, we need a doula yesterday. And we don't always have doulas that are available that can just jump into that. So there's a huge thing that's needed with education and planning. 
But what we have at Doula Giver, so I took away just the death doula certification and only offer the Doula Giver Specialist Practitioner, which is a full spectrum, holistic, non-medical, end-of-life practitioner. They help with elder care. They help with care consultant planning with healthy people. They have the end of life death doula part. They have a grief doula part and they have life doula as well. So they are full spectrum and they are able to offer all of these services, which again, at the end of the day, the best end of life is full spectrum. It is not just racing in as a death doula, showing up at that critical time that somebody's having their end of life and really putting band-aids on the situation. It can't really go well at that point. So having doula givers offer one high level practitioner degree allows you to work with, and I'm going to give you an example of how I started and what I was doing, allows you to offer different services within your practitioner certification that are not just crisis end of life at the bedside of somebody who's dying care consulting, planning ahead. What about our elders? We have elders who for decades need some form of support that are really struggling, that are not at the end of life, but yet need that holistic support and really good planning for quality of life. What about grief? We are suffering from grief on all levels in this world. And I'll tell you why, because we're not doing end of life correctly. So of course there's going to be complicated grief that people are just stuck with and traumatized by. Again, the planning of this, the getting ahead of it, the talking about it, the empowering, then, then having obviously the end of life go as well as we can have that possibly go. And I want to tell you that you can have it go well with symptom management, with conversation, with all that we know about end of life. And then what do we learn about life? from working with those at the end of life. I'll tell you that my life completely changed the minute I started working with people who were dying. Everything changed for me. My perspective, my level of gratitude, but also what I learned from them. You know, they say that death is the number one fear in the world. It's not the fear of death. When it shows up, and I've been blessed and honored to be with over a thousand people at the end of life. It wasn't the fear of the death itself. It was the regret that life was over and that they didn't fully live, that they didn't take chances, that they didn't go on that trip or, or you know, follow their heart, not their head, follow their heart to what they truly wanted in life. And now it was over. So what you learn about life the level of gratitude, the level of appreciation, but also squeezing out every beautiful morsel of this life. I honestly really don't take anything for granted. And I, and I try and take every opportunity to do what's being presented to me. In fact, my mother was it yesterday. I was on the phone with her telling her what I just recently did on a trip and, you know, did some things. And she's like, wow, you really did. You're doing so much. And I said, um, you learn that from people at the end of life that you just there, you can't put it off. You can't say, okay, well, maybe next year. We don't know that next year is going to happen. So give yourself that gift of getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Step out of your comfort zone. Try things. What is the worst that can happen? That you want always wanted to do something and maybe it didn't work out how you thought it would. So what? We learn from everything, but if we don't try, we're going to be held with those regrets. So our full spectrum doula giver specialist practitioners are trained in elder care doula, are trained in care consultant doula, are trained in end of life doula, are trained in grief doula, and are trained in life doula. They have a full spectrum holistic practitioner that they can offer all of those services. Now, I'll tell you how I started and then I want to really give you some good tips for yourself. I was a hospice nurse. So this is why, because it's not going well, end of life. That's why I created the death doula training to fill in the gaps. And what it, what an incredible honor and journey this has been. But how I started was, is that I would do care consulting because you can do that. It's a high price point at the time. I want to say it was probably 16 years ago. 
I was being paid $125 an hour for doing, and I had a two hour minimum for doing care consultant with families, families who were not ill, families who were healthy, families who wanted to talk about their end of life wishes, what it would take, you know, to stay at home, um, doing their advanced care planning, who would take care of them, all of those things that are critically, critically important. So I would consult with families and I would do this on the weekend. And sometimes I would do it after work on the phone. And then I also worked with, I would take an end of life client, but I'd only take one. And I only advocate for you to have one end of life client at a time. And this goes back into making a full-time income. The point and beauty of the death doula doula giver is that you are that continuous, consistent guide for that end of life patient and their family for the duration of that journey. You're not running in and out of the house. You're not coming in with just an hour visit and then having to run off to another family. And this, I stress this to our students and graduates that I only want you to take one end of life family at a time. This is what you're there to do is be that guide, holding that space for them continuously through that journey. When hospice is in and out, you are that consistent care and the eyes and ears for the hospice team. Well, then if I only have one patient at a time, how am I going to make a full-time income? Because you're able then to do care consultant. You can run workshops. You can have care consultant projects, just like I did with my families with a two-hour minimum. It's a high price point. And it's really important. Why? Because planning ahead is one of the key factors in how end of life goes well at the end. It doesn't, it's not just showing up at the end. I will tell you that as much as I know and how much that I do, it can't go well if you're just running in and putting band-aids on it. It has to start way back here with planning ahead, having the conversation, empowering people to make their own subjective decisions. So I had one family at a time. I take one end of life patient and the one that I'm thinking of, and it was really beautiful, his family, his main caregiver was his adult son who lived in California. We were in New York. And I would take him to doctor's office. I would take him to the grocery store. I was, you know, his doula and it was beautiful. It's one of the, it's one of the most magical opportunities that we are so privileged to be able to work with patients and families in this space that we're invited into their hearts and their homes. There is, it connects you to something so much greater than you've ever known. So I was his doula here. And again, I would take him to doctor's appointments and I would take him to the grocery store and we just have great chats and all of the beautiful things that go along with it. And then I also had an elder care client that I would take to lunch and take to doctor's appointments and then do my care consulting. And as soon as I had enough work that I could let go of my hospice job, yay, that was a big moment. So the minute that I could pay my bills, that I could pay my mortgage, that I could pay my bills, not have extra, but pay it, I let go of my hospice full-time job. And then I totally dedicated myself to Doula Givers Institute. And as we know, we are in a global movement, which is such an honor. But this is the same that I will teach new doulas, is that you want to do that. You want to make sure that you are able to offer an array of things, not just a bedside death doula. If that's what you want to do, that's wonderful. But I will tell you that making a full-time income just doing that is going to be virtually impossible. You'll burn out and it's also impossible just logistically. So I want to really have you think in terms of, do I want to make a change in end of life culture? And I hope that you say yes, because we need it desperately. But remember what I said, changing the culture is not just showing up at the very end when somebody is dying at the bedside. It's doing education. It's out in your communities planning. It's letting people know what choices they have, what things mean, how to put things in place. This is the key. So you want to have a full spectrum of things that you can offer. Most of my graduates offer the main end of life doula and one or two of the other things that they gravitate towards. So, you know, we have some that absolutely, and I understand this, our elders are amazing. They're so sweet. And there are some that just work with elders. They actually, one of our doulas just said, she never got an end of life client. They've all been her elder care clients that turned into end of life that she was just there for, which is really beautiful. 
I'm a big advocate on education. So I love advanced care planning. And here's what COVID did. COVID, if we weren't aware that end of life is going to affect all of us, COVID changed that. It showed us that no matter who you are, how much money you have, where you are in the world, end of life is going to show up. And when it does, and we don't have choices made and things in order, it is a thousand times more difficult. So people now are getting their affairs in order, their advanced directives, but there's much more than that. There's living well aging plans that doula givers do. Why is that important? I'm going to give you an example of a family I worked with. And it really, when I say some of these things, it, you know, I can't even believe that, you know, that I'm, that it's how it is, but it is. So in the United States, it's really expensive to live and it's really expensive to die. Actually, it doesn't have to be, but it is. So I was working with a family during their care consultant work projects and they lived in a home, which was beautiful. It had three stories. So that's, so three sets of stairs that that's a problem as you age, but that's, that's a little sidebar on how we have to make uh, adjustments to people to be safe. They had a little over $5 million in as in um, cash actually in, in what they had. And they said, you know, they had a history of dementia in their family and one in one of the person's fa family. And they said, we want to stay at home. We want to stay in our home. And they said, you know, we have, we have plenty of money. We have $5 million over $5 million. And so if it happens that we need care, we're just going to hire somebody to, to come in and to live with us. And I was like, okay, so I want to just lay this out for you. I want to show you what, so if you have dementia, it can last 10, 14, even years. And it comes to a place where you usually need 24 hour care, right? So someone to live in, that's what they were saying. And I showed them what it costs to have somebody come in hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, annually. And what do you think happened to that $5 million? It disappeared. In a 10 year time frame, that money was gone. So they were thinking about, oh my gosh, we don't have any, if that's the case, we won't have any money to leave our children. And we worked so hard that we want to leave the money. But but I think they were physically sick on seeing how quickly that money could disappear. And, and it does, and it does. So you want to make sure that you uh, know the power of the care consultant. And I love it because honestly, the care consultant is one of the major keys to a good end of life. You, you just, there's no way to even, you know, put that any other way than if I'm thinking about my end of life, if I think about what's important to me, if I put things in place, and I also, whether I'm conscious of it or not, I'm living each day with a different level of appreciation because I know that one day this journey will not be the way I know it today. So there's just so much beauty in that. So being able to offer, you know, these different areas of services, and again, People usually will do the end of life and then do either grief work or do um, care consultant or even work with elderly, you know, just follow your heart to what you want to do. But this allows you to have a full income. The care consultant work is a high price point. It off, and you don't have to be working 40 hours a week. You can do some workshops. You can take your beautiful clients to lunch and to the doctor's office because now you have that higher price point. You also have your death doula price point, which is between anywhere between $20, hour, $20 an hour and $100 an hour, depending on where you live. And it all balances out beautifully. It's actually amazing. It's such an amazing offering to be able to do. Now, I want to let you know what the biggest mistake is with people that are starting their new death doula business. And I will say, honestly, yeah, you need to have a drive in you like to want to start your own business. 73% of our graduates do their own private practice. I love my own private practice. I'm also going to say I'm probably more disciplined and harder on myself than any boss has ever been on me because this is not a job. This is my life's purpose. And every single day people are dying and it's not going well to get out there, to offer free training, to answer emails, to just be a support in this conversation, to train doula, professional doula givers is what we are here to do. So it's something that is fueled by so much love and passion and purpose. And I know that you would feel the same way when you come in for the calling. 
But I also want to tell you that, yeah, it requires work, but we, you know, at Dooly Givers, we'll give you all of your business and marketing guidelines, accountability pods, all the beauty that goes with that. But I want to let you know the number one mistake that new death doulas are making when they come out from wherever they're coming from, different trainings and whatnot. They're making the mistake on not understanding who is their customer, who is their client, who are they marketing to, who are they messaging to? And I want you to take a minute and answer that right now. If you are somebody here because you want to know how to make a full-time income as a death doula, who's your client? Who is the one that you are going to give that message to what support that you offer that they can utilize? No, it's not the end of life person. We think it is. They think it is. That's not who your market is. That's not who you're marketing to. Your market is the adult children of aging parents. There is a huge difference there. The other mistake that people make is that and this families make this as well. So you have to articulate this clearly is that the end of life doula is not somebody that has to be in that environment, be at the bedside of that end of life patient, because maybe that patient is still in the shock phase and not even able to like really articulate and doesn't want more people in that house. And maybe there's just complete fireworks going on with everyone, which a lot of times there are. The doula works directly with that main caregiver. Yes, obviously, if you can be with the patient, that's a beautiful thing, right? But that's not necessarily what the role entails. You are guiding that main caregiver to make sure that they understand how to care for their loved one, how to contact hospice. Do they have the supplies? Do they have somebody to talk to? Like you are the eyes and ears for that main caregiver. That's who you're supporting. That's who you're reinforcing the teaching with. That's who you are again, gonna be the eyes and ears alerting the hospice team on what's happening with that dynamic. So you want to think to yourself as that new death doula, where does my perfect ideal client live? Where do they go? Where do they live? How do I reach them? I'm gonna tell you one thing that's completely just a no brainer is your local library. <laughs> this is literally how I started Doula Givers. Didn't even know that I was starting a worldwide organization, which again has been the greatest honor. I developed a training for family caregivers based on the fact that the hospice nurse is supposed to teach the family how to do the care. If I am there for one hour once a week, it's impossible to do that. And I went to my CEO of hospice and I said, most end of lives are not going well. We have to do more. We have to be there more. He said, can't, can't. That's all we can offer them. And I thought, no, that's, that's not the answer. So I gave him this training. I said, look, if we're supposed to teach the family how to do end of life care, I've identified three phases of end of life. And I've come up with the interventions that families can use in each one of those phases. And he looked at this training and he goes, this is great. I love it. He goes, we can't, we can't use it. I said, why? He goes, we won't get paid for it. We won't be reimbursed for it. So I was like, so frustrated with that. And I said, okay, well, I'm just going to go teach it at the local library for free. I'm just going to offer to do a Saturday workshop, how to care for somebody at the end of life, family caregiver training and offer it for free to my community. And guess what happened? Completely filled up. Like they were pulling, like beautiful days, beautiful weekend days, pulling chairs from other rooms to try and fit people into this lecture. And then I put it online. And to this day, we have thousands and thousands of people. I still do it live online all this time. And we have thousands of people that come every single month and I stay on and answer questions. And it's the most beautiful global community, people from every corner of the world meeting in this presence of compassion and something that ties us into our humanity more than anything else. And it's something we need to remember today more than ever. So I want to give you the understanding on how to make a full-time income as a death doula. And I also want you to know, to be very clear on understanding who your client is, your client who hires you is going to be the adult children. Occasionally it's an end of life person who doesn't have any family, but for the most part, it is going to be adult children, family members who are caring for an aging, dying loved one. 
They are your client. They are the one who pays you. They are the ones that you are talking to, educating and answering to. The person who's dying obviously is the one who's getting the care, but your client and who you are messaging to is the adult children. So I hope that that was really clear. Please leave your messages down below. I would love to answer any and all that you have. If you feel called to become a doula giver specialist practitioner, we need you. We are at the infancy of this movement. We have so many people requesting doula givers that we cannot fill, and they are having end of lives that are not going well. We only have one opportunity to have that go well, and we are just beginning a crisis of our elder population. So we need those people that are called to step forth and do this, and I will tell you this, that it is the hardest thing that I've ever done, but it is the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. It's my life's purpose. And I hope that it's your calling too. If it is, I'll see you in class. Leave me some questions and I will make sure to answer each and every one of them. Thank you so much for being part of Ask a Death Doula. My name is Suzanne O'Brien and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks everybody.